Hello, welcome to module 1 of lecture 2 of the course VLSI Design, Verification and Test. In lecture 1, we went through a bird's eye view of uh, the full design VLSI design process. Uh, we saw that um, there are uh, three important levels of abstraction at, uh, through which the design goes through the architectural level, the logic level and the geometric level. And we saw different views uh, through which the design goes through as well. At the, uh, so we saw the behavioral view, the structural view and the physical view. And um, we, we saw that the design goes through steps which are known as synthesis. We saw uh, a few important synthesis steps, uh, architectural synthesis, logic synthesis and geometrical synthesis or physical design. And, the, and now today what we will do is that uh, we will take a, a more detailed look into the first important design step that is architectural synthesis or high level synthesis. So uh, before going into this step, let us say that the initial design starts even earlier than this. The initial design which we may say as the application level will also contain a specification of the entire application. Now this application um, will also be designed in terms of a set of processes which will be communicating. However, for all of these, if we look from the perspective of an entire embedded system, all these processes we may not need to implement them in hardware. Some of, uh, some of them it will be sufficient for us to implement in software, which means that for those processes, for those blocks of code, we won't. We will only use a general purpose processor and um, and execute a high level um, program like a C language program for that process and run it, and that will be sufficient. So this step is called hardware software partitioning. Now the future steps, starting from the architectural synthesis, which we are concerned with here. Will, will be concerned with only the hardware synthesis part. So the software will be taken care by a different process, different set of different flow, which we will not take here. So uh, the hardware also, the, the, at the beginning of the architectural synthesis step, we will have a set of concurrent communicating processes. Each such process will be described formally using a progra programming language, a, high level um, uh, hardware description language program in Verilog, VHDL, etc. And the high level synthesis step will take it from the architectural level design and will end up into a register transfer level design. So uh, what we will start with first the Verilog and VHDL description will be there. Then the design analyzer which is again a program will transform this program into its control and data flow graph. Given this, trans, uh, given this control and data flow graph, we will, uh, we will perform scheduling, allocation and binding on them and ultimately obtain a controller and a data path. So architectural synthesis is also called high level synthesis. Uh, the input behavioral model is abstracted as threaded concurrent communicating processes. Uh, so these processes represent the operations and the data uh, and uh, the how the data is transformed through these operations and process modules have interfaces to other blocks and the outside world as we said yesterday and the output of the high level synthesis step is a data path and control path the data path is composed of a set of register set of registers or a register bank a functional unit bank and interconnection network so this is the register bank this one is the functional unit. This one is a functional unit bank. This is the interconnection network. Okay, and and along with that, we will have this controller FSM, which will control operations, the the flow of data in this uh, data path. So yesterday we said that registers are connected to functional units via MUXs. The functional units again are connected to the registers through DMUXs. 
MUX and DMUXs are controlled by the FSM controller and after this design process, after the high level synthesis process, the design gets broken down into a, into, uh, into a set of steps, into a set of clock steps and at each step some uh, at each step some registers and functional units are activated and these activations define the RTL assignments. So we also said yesterday that we will have a set of parallel register transfers like R1 equals to R2 into R3 and R4 equals to R2 into R, 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 R2 plus R3 in time step 1 and in time step 2 we have R2 equals to R3 plus R4 and R5 equals to R6 minus R1. So although I said this yesterday but I did not possibly take a concrete example showing the use of these muxes, demuxes, etc. So I uh, will just go through yesterday's example again once more and show you where the muxes and demuxes are before proceeding further. So I said yesterday that I have a basic block, this is a basic block and corresponding to this basic block let us say we have arrived at a schedule and in this schedule, uh, we said that the first uh, the first statement A, in the first statement we said E equals to A plus B. So it happens in time step 1, this has two time steps, this has two time steps, in time step 1 what happens? A and B are added and E is produced and in time step 2, this A and E are added, the second statement occurs, A and E are added and G is produced. If this cannot be done in time step 1 because E is dependent because the, the, the E is on the right hand side in statement 2 and is only defined that is on the LHS of it, it is in the LHS of statement 1. Similarly on the other part and we said that to implement the schedule so we will do an allocation and binding. So first of all we have four registers, um, four registers R1, R2, R3 and R4 in which I have A, B, C and D and then what happens is that what we have decided is that after time step 1, at time step 1 A and B these two should be activated, these two should be activated and then the output will go to R2 and not to R1. For R3 and R4 similarly it will happen. So what we will, we will just take an example now. So what we said is that initially we have four registers. This was R1, R2, R3, R4. Okay. And we have, we said that a mux will control which of the register input inputs should go to a function unit. And what we have is a situation like this. And initially I have this A, B, C and D in the in these four registers. And this mux has say so this mux one has select inputs. Uh, is 0 S1 of, of say 1, S01, one, S11 one, one. and this one similarly has these four inputs from these four registers similarly. Okay. This four registers similarly. And will also be similarly controlled by two uh, select in two select inputs 
say S02 and S12. Okay. And the output, as I said, will contain a D max. Will contain a D max, which will decide the output of the adder should go to which which particular okay so this will also have two select inputs say is 0 3 and is 1 3 right so now what should be the set of control signals that we have we should have if you want let us say the e output to be here and the g output to be here say and for c let us say uh, we have c and d and uh, let us say we want this c and h you c and d c and d to be here and the final output h to be here if this is so, then what should be the register transfers that that I should, what should be the values of these select inputs. So at T1, say, what should be the select inputs? I want to select what for max 1, for the adder 1, what do I want? Similarly, this will again, uh, I have not drawn the other part, there will be an adder 2 here which will again have these two inputs and two muxes and one demux for it that I have not shown. Hmm? That I have not shown. But let us say for adder 1 what will happen? Is 0, 1. What? Let us say um, this, this is I0, I0, zero, I1, I2, I3. So R1 will be selected when mux 1 is uh, for all when, when select inputs are 0, 0. So R1 will be selected when select inputs are say 0, 0. Here I want to select for, for, for marks 2, I want to select what? For marks 2 I want to select R2 and that will be selected when it is 0, 1. So S2, 0 equals to 0 and S 1 2 s 1 2 equals to um, s 1 2 equals to 1 right so then what will happen in the first time step i will be able to select r1 and r2 for max 1 will select r1 max 2 will select r2 at the first time step and hence adder 1 if it is activated in time step 1 will get the correct inputs a and b then what will happen at time step 1 the output should go to where should go to r2 so therefore the d mark should also select s03 equals to 0 and and s13 equals to 1 so why because if it selects um, if if it selects this select inputs the output of the adder will go uh, uh, will go so this particular this particular line which goes to R2 will be selected and um, the uh, the output E will get stored into R2 this as desired. So similarly I will be able to and the uh, and the uh, therefore in time step one I will be able to uh, this uh, uh, activate the register transfer R2 equals to R1 plus R2 for using these control signals right so similarly i will be able to get the set of register transfers through proper control signals um, uh, by appropriately selecting the select inputs of these muxes and demuxes i will be able to um, appropriately select control signal so that the appropriate register transfers are activated okay so With this uh, example, uh, we now go and look at the overall high level synthesis steps.
So with this we come to, to the end of module 1 of lecture 2.